Hello girls, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and welcome to another Tarot Talk Tuesday. Couple points of order, um, just a couple things. For one, I have Jilly on my lap, so if she needs to get up and ends up bumping the mic, that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> a couple other things is I was going to cut my hair on Saturday, uh, and then I switched it to Sunday, and it obviously did not get done. So you have to deal with this shagginess. Um, it's quite horrible. Um, but yeah, I could probably do it today. Today that I, the day that I'm filming this is Monday. And uh, the reason that I'm filming this during the day is actually because I got into a little accident. Um, going to work this morning, I... Uh, I, I was driving to work. Let, let's have story time here for a second. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your beverage, whatever it may be. And uh, sit back. Let's have story time for a second before we get into the tarot. Um, so I was driving along. And I was about to take the exit that I, I'm supposed to take. And I look up, you know, at a, at a, and out of nowhere, there seems to be this object in the middle of the road on on the uh, far right side of a three-lane highway. And I swerved to miss it and didn't quite achieve that entirely. Um, turns out, uh, yeah, it damaged my car pretty well. Um, my, my new beautiful little tiny green car uh, got damaged. I, I was so sad by that. But everybody's okay. I I was the only one in there. I'm perfectly fine. Just shaken up. But, yeah, I, I pulled over, saw the damage and all that. And, you know, called my, my boyfriend. Told him that I was in an accident. Called the, the resident manager at the place where I work and said, Hey, um, you're going to have to cover for me because I just got into an accident and the car is not going to be drivable uh, to get to work. I was about a half an hour from work. So, turns out, uh, like the, the lights, or one of my uh, running lights, uh, you know, is totally dangling. And the uh, pump for the reservoir for the windshield wiper is completely, like, just dangling there. And, like, part of my fender is gone. My, my door's dang, dinged up and whatnot. It, it got me good. Uh, or I got it good, either way. Um, turns out, I look back and I'm like, okay, whatever it is, it's still in the highway there. And it went from the far right lane to the far left lane. And people were like, you know, going by it. And some people actually looked like they were going over it. But I, I, knowing what it is now, I don't know if they actually were or if it was just the optical illusions. But turns out, it was a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Like, a wheelbarrow just happened to fall off somebody's truck and was in the middle of the road, and as I swerved to miss it, I didn't quite succeed. So, cops came up. Like, nobody called in that there's a wheelbarrow in the middle of the road. Um, but the state troopers pulled up, and they got that out of the way. They saw my hazard lights were on and whatnot, and they come over, and they're like, Hey, did you hit the wheelbarrow? I'm like, is that what that was? <laughs> so... Uh, turns out the guy that ended up, you know, losing it off the back of their truck came back for it and said that they're going to pay for all the damages and everything. Uh, so, you know, we, everybody exchanged information, all that stuff. It's, it's just been a day. So my boyfriend had to come back up and get me and I'm going to be taking my pickup truck to work. So, I mean, overall, I, I'm okay Everything's going to get taken care of. Uh, all that stuff's done. But I figured I'd sit down and do a video or so to try to kind of unwind and, yeah, decompress a little. Because it, it, it's been a trying morning. Anyway. Other points of order. Um, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't know if it was because of the Crystal Pagan Sunday uh, video that I did this past week, but I have lost some subscribers. You know, it, it's something that happens with YouTube and whatnot, and 
you know, that I kind of expect that from time to time, especially on something controversial as witchcraft in the Bible and um, going point by point. And, you know, not everybody takes that well, and I understand that, and that's no problem. Um, but I did lose some subscribers there, and if you are watching these and you're enjoying these, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It does help out the channel. Uh, it's this channel is all about fostering a community and whatnot of Christo pagans, Christian witches, or witches in general, um, or people who are just uh, who who are Christian but allies and whatnot. You know, all those good people, or people that just like seeing me because, well, you know, I'm pretty sexy and I know it. Um, other points of order is uh, if you can hit that like button, it does help out this channel and whatnot. Always much appreciated. And if you have any suggestions, comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below, uh, down in my, my nether regions, in my pants, and uh, let me know what you think. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into we are looking at the Ten of Swords. We're making our way through the swords. So let's kick it off by reading from the Pictorial Key of the Tarot by A.E. Waite. Again, I read this only because this is what would have been uh, your, your guide to the tarot back in 1911, whenever it came out. I think, was it 1911, 1912? One of those, one of those years in the early 1900s, whenever it came out. Now I'm getting my tarot history mixed up. Uh, thanks, mind, memory. Anyway, A.E. Waite writes, A prostrate figure pierced by all the swords belonging to the card. Divinatory meaning. Okay, let's stop there for a second. I have no complaints about that. I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's go on and see if that sticks true whatsoever is intimidated by the design or in intimated okay that that's a weird word you don't usually see intimated okay we're just gonna go with it mm -hmm. by the design uh also pain affliction tears sadness desolation it is not especially a card of violent death Okay, reverse meaning, advantage, profit, success, favor, but none of these are permanent. Also, power and authority. Okay, I don't entirely agree. Um, eh, yeah, th we're, we're going to get into it. Because for me, this would be, um, you know, some pain, affliction, tears, sadness, desolation for now. Uh, keep keep in mind that things do get better. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into my notes. <sighs> Excuse me. It's going to be a long day, guys. Okay. And I want, whoops, wrong one. I'm hitting the wrong buttons. I'm mashing buttons over here and it's not working out for me. Okay. So first things first, we see this individual uh, here appears to be dead, probably. I mean, he's got ten freaking swords in his, in, in their back, so I would assume that they are dead as a doornail. Okay. There appears to be a red shroud over the lower half. We've seen a red covering in the in the suit of swords before, with the eight of swords, but that was more of a full dress rather than a shroud or cape, cloak, etc. Uh, could it be part of modesty? Possibly. However, I pose the possibility that the shroud could have been white and stained red with the blood. If this is the case, it would mean that the shroud was more of innocence. This is only a theory, so let me know what you think. So, yes, absolutely. Definitely let me know what you think. Could the shroud have been white? Was it white and it turned uh, red by the blood? Other things that turn, you know that are covered in blood and whatnot uh, may, makes me think of our tradition in crystal paganism of Christ on a cross and whatnot. 
you know, we talk about washed by the blood and whatnot. Um, is the blood being spilled here? Is this innocent blood that has wiped away the innocence uh, or ha has uh, kind of cloaked the innocence or covered the innocence? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just a theory that I'm posing. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Could it have been white? And if so, what would that necessarily mean? Um, it, was it always red? Could have been. And then what would that mean? Um, but yeah, that that's something I wanted to pose a question on there to see what you guys thought. The next one that we come to is I want to look at this person's hand because I never noticed this until I was doing some uh, some research on this. And their hand is in the sign of the benediction, which, which is this, or actually it's that, you know, right? Yeah, I got that right, right like that. Okay, um, which, which is a sign of a blessing that also that is also seen in the hierophant. Um, let me go ahead and pull up a picture of the hierophant here real quick. Let me see if I can get a picture real quick for you guys. The Hierophant. Okay, and we're going to just save that there. Okay, let's see if I can get that picture up here real quick. Uh... Oh, son of a bitch. Where did it save to? <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we can, maybe we can't. Hold on. Um, I, I really wanted to... Let's just save and save pictures there. Okay. Let's see if we got it there. There we go. And it's not letting me do it. Okay. Well... Son of a gun. And let me try this. Because I, 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 I do want it to let's take this away. Now you guys can see, like, all the things. Okay, there. Yeah, you can see what I have open here. I have YouTube and Gnostic Gospels and the Hierophant. Okay, anyway. Yeah, I don't really care if you guys see what I have there. Okay, so looking at the Hierophant, I don't know why I'm looking at the camera because it's not really on me right now. Looking at the Hierophant, we have the sign of the benediction in his right hand. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is the same sign as what this dead individual is giving. So I found that very interesting that we see the sign of benediction, a sign of blessing in both the Hierophant and the Ten of Swords. And I never noticed that until I, was, I started uh, looking at that or started researching this that somebody else pointed out. So thank you for pointing that out to me. Um, so let's move on from that. Whoops. Oh, son of a gun. You know what? I, I am just failing at life over here. Um, oh, that was the hand. We are going to look at his head. Okay. Looking at the head, we see that the face is away from us as the viewer. We will be discussing what he's looking at in a minute. But... I find it interesting that his head is away from us, or his face is away from us. Um, I don't know, that, that kind of speaks to me more of the innocence that there might have been. Um, but I'm not quite sure how to, um, how, how to rationalize that. And I would like your comments down below. Uh, do tell me what you think of this um this positioning of the head of the face uh that they are looking away from me it's kind of like their blessings are behind behind them um but they're looking somewhere else uh, 
I'm not not quite sure. I'm just rambling on different theories here. And Jelly's starting to slip there. Okay. But let's move on. Let's move to the Ten Swords. Obviously in the back. Like he's a pincushion. Uh, we have been looking at the shading on the swords. Uh, this, by now, can probably be debunked. Uh, but I still want to entertain the idea. Um... <laughs> uh, so, in this one, we see the light is on the left. This would mean that the better days were behind this person, marking this in line, <clears throat> in the line of thought and creativity. We can say that the better ideas and the earlier thoughts may have been better and more pure. But, since this is a di direct contradiction to this card, I would say that this theory is... Uh, as this individual, dead. And that's page one. I'm going to do my little Paul Harvey. That's page one. Page two. <laughs> you guys remember Paul Harvey? He used to just like sit there and just read news like on the radio. And it was dry as hell, but it was so entertaining. I don't know why. He just had a voice for radio. Anyway, I used to listen to him from time to time. And that's the rest of the story. He always always had those. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> um, we're going to look at the land around him. I, I, like I said, I think that the shading on the swords it, it had a... Sorry for bumping the mic, that was me. I think it had a good start. And I think that the first what was it, five, six cards, were totally great. But we kind of ran aground there, and um, I think it's been debunked. Maybe instead of looking at the shading, maybe looking where the light is uh, is pointed towards. Uh, I don't know. Something to think about if you are considering going on with these, uh, going down those rabbit holes. I, I think I, I think I'm going to leave that rabbit hole not gone down any further. Um, I, I will still look at them for the rest of the swords, but I think this has been a pretty debunked theory. Um, but it could have totally been possible, and I, I would have regretted it if I did not look at it. Um, okay, so we're looking at the land around the individual. We don't see any growth. So this is truly a land where life does not thrive. Obviously, we have a dead person here, um, and we have land where nothing is living around them. No, no sprouts, no leaves, nothing. So, really a land of the dead. Uh, but then I wanted to look at the background. Here we're actually going to look to see what this individual is looking at. So, looking in the background, we see uh, still waters, mountains, and a sunrise. This is what this individual is looking at. Even though they are obviously in a bad situation, they understatement, they still have their eyes on the on a brighter tomorrow. Um so yeah, I kind of I kind of like that. You know, if that's what they're they're looking at. So putting this all together, uh this card it, this is a card of the ending of a of a status quo. You need to look at the situation with a clear mind and rational thinking, i.e. the swords. Getting to this point may be painful now, but you will have clear skies ahead. Getting to the to the point of living or uh, I'm sorry, getting to the point of being past the pain might not be an easy thing to do. But afterwards, you probably won't find yourself in that situation again. This is not always true. Um, but for instance, say that let's just use finances because finances are an easy thing to do uh, to explain things with. Um, if you have a situation where you get a credit card and you max it out and you're you, you've gotten yourself to where you are 
living paycheck to paycheck and you can barely make the payments on this credit card because the interest rate is so high um once you get out of that debt and you completely free yourself from it you're probably not going to get a credit card and max it out um or you're going to get a credit card and not max it out as quickly or you're only going to use it for emergencies like you know whenever your car hits a wheelbarrow and um you know has to go into a shop or something like that maybe you're only using it for that rather than um you know frivolous things like going to mcdonald's to get you know a two dollar meal and paying interest on it so most likely you're not going to get into that situation again where you accumulate that um that amounts to get into that same situation that you just got out of you're going to be a little bit more careful a little bit more cautious on how you spend that money then and i even have a for instance here for instance in a relationship uh reading you may have been betra betrayed now that the situation has run its course you have a choice dwell or move on if you choose to dwell which can be healthy from a healing aspect be careful how long you stay there and by that i mean that there is some healing and wallowing in the wallowing of a relationship gone sour and i will not begrudge you the opportunity to you know heal in that manner however if you are still there three four five ten years down the line um that's not exactly healthy for you you may feel betrayed and you're not really you know you're not going past it you're not getting um past the point that you need to be now we all heal in our own time and that's very understandable if it takes you a little longer than somebody else to heal from a long-term relationship gone sour but just be careful not to stay there too long and not to beat yourself up over something like that for too damn long okay let's go ahead and look at the reversed in reverse you you may be fighting against the fact that this is over you're not ready to move on keep in mind the longer you dwell the harder it will be this can also be pointing toward a painful memory that is resurface resurfacing sorry we've talked about uh discovering and cutting cords in the past weeks in our book club series our witchy book club series if you're not watching it it's on saturdays you should watch um maybe this is one that is calling for you to deal with now now like it says in our studies our witchy book club series you know sometimes these let's put that right back up right sometimes these uh situations they come up and you know we thought we've dealt with them and you know or we may never have thought of them before but you know we scanned we looked and we didn't see anything that was really needing to be dealt with but as our our body our mind our uh, our spirit guides whatever you want to call them once they say hey um okay you're ready to deal with this now it may come to our attention that there is something there to deal with that either you thought you may have dealt with or that you didn't know needed to be dealt with so just some things uh that are coming to mind there so that's for the reverse so overall uh not a terrible card to get uh especially if you need to have um reassurance that something is over something is dead um i would keep in mind to continue to look towards the horizon that there are better days ahead um 
you know, th this person, even though they were dying, they still gave the sign of a blessing, um, unknown whether it's blessing the individuals that uh, stabbed him in the back, or if he's giving a blessing a as a final blessing to himself before he moves on. Unknown. Make up your own mind on that one. I, I cannot um, say one way or another. So anyway, that is the Ten of Swords. Uh, join me next week. Wait, is it? Next week is the... Uh, is a deck review and reveal. Uh, which one are we doing? I don't even know. Hold on. I can pull it up. I got. I already have it uploaded. Which one is it? Oh, we're looking at Secrets of the Mystic Grove, which I've actually had for a while and I haven't gotten to use it because I recorded it and it didn't take and or it didn't. I didn't do all of the stuff for it as the shuffle ability and whatnot. So, yeah, I had to re film it so I could upload it and have it for a Terror Talk Tuesday. So join me next week for a deck review and reveal of the Secrets of the Mystic Grove, or as I like to lovingly call it, Arwen's deck. And um, yeah, join me tomorrow for the Witchy, uh, Witchy Wednesday. I was going to say Witchy Book Club series, that's Saturdays. Um, for Witchy Wednesday tomorrow, we are talking about the Sacral Chakra. Uh, we have Table Talk Thursdays on, on Thursday. On Saturday, we have our Witchy Book Club series. And on Sunday, we are continuing our series on looking at witchcraft uh, in the Bible. And is it able to stand? Uh, you know, what do we say to people that uh, come to us as Christo Pagans and say, you know, you should not be practicing witchcraft? And uh, yeah, we're going to be going through, this is going to be a multi-part multiple part series i thought i could do it in two and there's just so many things to address so join me on sunday for that with crystal paganism sunday special easter edition and um, until next week may you have or n until tomorrow actually may you have love hugs and ladybugs Bye bye